Praise the Lord. Put your hands to Wesley. <laughs> Blessed are you. Yeah. Come yeah. In the name of the Lord. One more time. Blessed are you. Come in the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. One more time. Blessed are you. Come in the name of the Lord. Oh, <clears throat> thank you. Let's give a big clap for the worship team. Jessica, wow. This morning I talked about um, Hallel, outrageous deity worship. There she is right there. The manifestation of Hallel. Yeah, boasting, boasting. That's what the word came to mean. Well, it's been uh, incredible to be with you. You're a zealous, intelligent, winsome, fun, incredible group. I think what you're doing here is amazing. Uh, I'm so thankful to the Lord that he uh, made it possible for myself to be here to connect with you. And I believe that we're going to have many fruitful years together. Sam Matthews is a tremendous gift to the body of Christ. Thank God for your life and godliness. It's a beautiful thing. And Blake, I, I, I hadn't seen my Colombian... Uh, <laughs> In a long time, no, he, 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 got, he got a little darker and more swarthy in the last four years since I saw him. We went for a lovely walk at Estes Park for uh, six years ago, and uh, just great what God's doing in your region, isn't it? Great, great, great what God's doing. Oh, you're kind of like a third world church, because you go on for like 25 hours in a row without stopping. <laughs> If you don't get six hours, you haven't got your money's worth, right? <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to try our best. To, oh, by the way, um, I uh, have a few resources. I'm, I'm, I've got 20 CDs that we put on to three USBs. So all your leaders, I'm giving a set to all your leaders. Okay? Every, every one of your pastors are getting all 20 CDs. So we're going to make that available. This here book is an amazing book written by my wife. Ecstatic prophecy. That's what I'm going to speak on tonight. And uh, we were filled with the Spirit dramatically in 1987. We were Baptist and Plymouth Brethren. Uh, I was four generations Plymouth Brethren. My favorite Bible teacher was John MacArthur. I had 1,000 tapes. <clears throat> and, um, and the Holy Spirit broke into us at a Christmas party. And five hours later, after shaking, convulsing, jackhammering, windmilling, flopping, flailing, flying. No, we didn't fly. <clears throat> uh, <coughs> you know, I got in the car and I went, oh, it was Christmas party. Well, the stars are still brightly shining. It's still, it's still the year of our dear Savior's birth. And I remember thinking, I'll never eat another Big Mac as long as I live. We've been to the holy place. How can I profane my body with an unholy thing? You know, like, we entered into a new domain. That was uh, 87 Christmas. We went for about 50, um, six months, 50, 40 to 50 hours a week. No, a week straight for eight months doing nothing but prophesying and praying and shundying. And... Uh, so Stacy, so, uh, you know, because I was Baptist at the time, they'd kicked us out, though I think they'd already kicked us out. I can't remember. Uh, we only lasted eight months. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> because uh, they were all conservatives, I mean, there was not really a charismatic in the bunch, I was forced to study seriously historical, you know, prophetic spirit uh, I finally found the mystics. They were the first ones I found that really... And so I read all the mystics, every supernatural that you could find. And, uh, and then after about 20 years, I convinced Stacy to write it. You know, what goes on inside an, ex an ecstatic visionary? What happens? How does it come? How do you cultivate it? You know, and so this probably has the most extensive research on the ecstatic prophetic form of anything that I've seen. And I've read... Hundreds, yay, some hundreds of sources on all this. So who, who's, uh, who shakes but doesn't prophesy? Who shakes? Okay, Robert, you're the man. Robert, come on up here. The, the, the wonder, okay, because now you're going to prophesy. 
Now you're going to prophesy. God bless you, Robert. Proud of you. So, um, so in my, in my uh, effort to, you know, push into this, I came up, uh, Acts 2, of course, is our most famous passage in the last days. I would pour my spirit in all flesh, sons and daughters, prophesy old men, visions, dreams, etc. Four times it mentions revelation, revelatory gifts. The revelatory is the prominent manifestation of the Holy Spirit coming upon. The revelatory. But there are many others. I mean, feats of strength, wisdom, craftsmanship, entrepreneurship. I mean, every given subject needs the filling of the Holy Spirit. But the predominant manifestation is the prophetic power to lead uh, and prophesy. And so, uh, 1 Samuel 1.9 is, is, in my opinion, one of the greatest stories of this manifestation. So, I'm going to... I'm going to lead you through a wonderful story tonight, and then by the grace of God, we're going to do this. And many of you tonight will be released into a prophetic dimension that you have never heretofore been in, and you will walk into it because, because you know, I mean, if you know, different groups carry different anointings. So this is our anointing for 25 years, 27 years. I think Stacy's prophesied personally on a minimum of 10 to 15,000 people. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about group. I'm talking about personal. It could be much more than that. It could be 25,000. Probably is. I, I've got to do my numbers again. <clears throat> but uh, so when we do this, everywhere we do this in the whole wide world, like 50 countries, always significant numbers of people get drawn into a new dimension because you always impart what you have, right? So that's what we're going to do, and that's what's going to happen here tonight. So let's jump right into this incredible story. <clears throat> Turn your iPhones to 1 Samuel 9. Okay. Okay, there was a Benjaminite, a man of standing, whose name was whose name was Kish, son of this guy, son of that guy, son of the next guy, and son of the last guy. <clears throat> okay, so don't let the names trip you up. Just go on through. Go on by. He had a son, an impressive young man, named Saul, who became king when he was thirty. He reigned over Israel forty years. He was without equal among the Israelites, a head taller than all the others. Another one, another one says, you know, he's handsome or he's tall. I remember preaching in Mexico, Como Mexico, no hay dos, right there in Monte Maria. And I was preaching this very message, and all of a sudden the translator went, I was going, and he went, da, 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 El Guapo. And I, and I went, El Guapo? I said, what is El Guapo? <clears throat> and he told me, the handsome one. And I suddenly got the joke from the classic Three Amigos. <clears throat> Do you remember the bandit? Like with the patch, with the tooth out, and really ugly, and hair, and moles. His name was El Guapo. <clears throat> I started laughing and laughing. El Guapo, El Guapo, ha, ha, ha. So that's my Mexican name. I'm El Guapo. Everywhere I go in Mexico, I'm called El Guapo. So Saul was El Guapo. It mentions he's a head taller than all the rest. Why is that important? Stands out, but especially in a warrior culture. If you're a fighting culture, the taller, I mean, those are the warriors. And the long arms, I remember I was with an orphan, for, you know, pastor from Australia, and he was just a rough guy. He's, oh, yeah, got to watch out for those guys with long arms. He says, long arms, they'll get you every time, you know, <clears throat> and because uh, he was a brawler. In his first life. <laughs> so the donkeys, verse 3, belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son, take one of your servants and go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the hill country of Ephraim. Couldn't find them. Around the area of Selassia, didn't find it. District of Salim, donkeys were not there. Passed through the territory of Benjamin, didn't find them there. They finally reached the district of Zaf. Saul said, come on, let's go back or my father's going to stop worrying about the donkeys. He's going to be worrying about us. I mean, if you know, I would have stopped long before Zuff. <clears throat> so, <laughs> go back to verse 4. This is not an incredibly exciting story. I mean, this is your basic Genesis of Shrek. <laughs> donkey, donkey, donkey. The man spends three days looking for a donkey. The donkeys belonging to Saul's father were lost. Donkey, donkey. 
in Mexico. They told me. I went to the Puebla Mountains. They said, oh, yeah, donkeys always get lost. I said, really? They said, yeah, they're always getting lost. <clears throat> so this is his job. <clears throat> He's like 30 or something. He's working for his dad. They're in a tribal clan. You know, he's looking for his donkey. And there's nothing exciting about this. It's kind of like found God's will looking for my own donkey, which preaches better in King James. But I can't say it because I don't know. Maybe I'll just get that one verse up there of King James. <clears throat> looking for his own donkey. So um, so they've been out there under the stars for days. Probably guys are chasing him. You know, there's bandits and there's bad guys and tribes. <clears throat> so verse 6, the servant finally replies, says, look, in town... There's a man of God who's highly respected. Everything he says comes true. Let's go there. Perhaps he will tell us the way to go. Now, the servant is taking the feminine role. You know that. You know that. Uh, yeah. See, how many of you guys lose your keys? You know, you, you lose the keys, and then we tear the house apart looking for the keys. Invariably, the wife will come, spiritual as she is, and say, have you prayed about it? I hate that. No, I haven't prayed about it. And she will say, God knows where the keys are. I know he knows where the keys are. But I've just lost all sanctification, tearing the house apart. And now she wants me to pray. And ask God where the keys are. That's the servant right here. Saul said to the servant, verse 7, well, if we go to the man of God... What are we going to give him? We've got nothing left in our sacks. All our bread's eaten, the moldy stuff. This jerky we brought is gone. What are we going to give the man of God? Notice, still the connection thousands of years ago between a financial gift and, you know, going upwards. They're going to seek the man of God, seeking something, and they realize that honor, part of honor, is really with monetary value. It really is. Servant says to him, Well, I gotta have a quarter shekel of silver. I'll give it to the man of God so he'll tell us where to go. Okay, so let's go do it. So they're on their way. Good, Saul says to his servant, verse 10, Let's go. They set out to where the man of God is. As they're coming, going up the hill to the town, they meet some girls drawing water. They say, Is the seer in? Kind of like Lucy and Charlie. Brown. Is the doctor in? Yes, the doctor is in. And uh, they say, He is, but you better hurry. Because he's coming to our town today for the people to have a sacrifice on the high place. Uh, <clears throat> verse 13, they're going to have a sacrifice. No one can eat until the prophet blesses the sacrifice. So that means you have 30 hungry Larmanian men up on the roof waiting for dinner. So this is not going, you, you don't have a lot of time here. Yeah, they're going to be angry. If you, if, you, if you keep their dinner long, they're going to be angry. <clears throat> so um, he has to go there. Now, verse 15, we get to the drama of the story. Now, the day before, when, when Jason? Day before. The day before. The Lord revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm going to send you a man from the tribe of Benjamin. Anoint him leader over my people Israel. He will deliver my people Why, be, from the hand of the Philistines. Why? Because I've looked down on my people and their cry has reached me. So the, the, the drama of this is three days ago, the donkeys belonging to Saul's father. Donkey. Donkey. He's wandering around. <clears throat> In the middle of that exercise, the word of God is sent from heaven. Prophetic word. Now we're about to land on what was sent yesterday, and it's going to change destiny forever. <clears throat> you could be looking for your own donkey. And the word of God has already left heaven this week, and tonight you're going to collide with it. Literally. Literally. Moving from, you know, a herdsman. 
to a king overnight and you don't even know it yet because we haven't gone into the exercise. Come on. Destiny is about to get, they're gonna, it's going to change. Why? Because the cry of, the, of Wyoming, the cry of Colorado, the cry of you know, the nation, the cry of the world is going up. It's hitting the ears of the Lord, the Lord God of Sabaoth, and he's sending out draft notices. Bob Jones said, he's sending out these notices. He's about to enlist the army. You don't even know it's gone from heaven. It's got your name on it. This is why every night with God's like a date. You don't know what's going to happen. It's like, we're having another meeting. Woo! Do, 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 do. You don't know what's going to, you don't want to miss a meeting. If you miss a meeting, you can miss the whole deal. We used to say, we're having another meeting. Don't miss the meeting. Hundreds of people would pack in because you never know. Every single meeting, someone, many of them got released into prophetic directions and things that they never, ever would have expected. Never. Even the most quiet, timid, you know, outrageous, like quiet back. They, they wouldn't say boo to a goose and suddenly wham. And the next thing you know, I mean, they're a champion, a face like a lion, the lion word. They're lions. <clears throat> now notice, it's for a purpose. The cry in El Paso, Juarez, it's reaching the Lord. So he's anointing you and your sons and daughters. The cries are going up. So he's anointing you to deliver them. And the anointing is going to come with spirit of power. It's incredible. Verse 17, when Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord said, this is the man I spoke to you about. Here he comes. He's coming. Saul comes. Uh, hello. Uh, would you tell me where the Sears house is, please, by the way? Just a little awkward here, six foot tall and a half. Samuel says, verse 19, I am the seer. Samuel replied, go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you're going to eat with me. In the morning, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to tell you all that's in your heart. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, don't worry about them. They've already been found. And to whom the desire of Israel turn, if not to you and your father's family? That is an amazing greeting. Like, that's a Noel Alexander hairdo in the making right there. Back to the future guy. He just told them everything about everything in one greeting. And he said, Israel is going to turn to you. The desire of Israel is going to be on you and your family. And uh, the very first thing Saul does is goes, but, but, but am I not a Benjaminite from the smallest tribes, not my clan, the least of all the clans? Why do you say such a thing? I mean, it's always the same song and dance with these guys. Gideon, but I'm blah, 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 blah. same line, same ballpark, different players. Moses, I've called you to, to let my people go, but, blah, blah, but, but I can't talk. Jonah, go to Nineveh, but I'm going fishing, and I'm the worm. Jeremiah, I've called you from a youth, but I'm only a youth. I mean, it never gets old with these guys. I was gonna, our church is right in the center of town. I have a big, huge kiosk billboard. I, I want to do a sermon called, How Big Is Your Butt? <laughs> They'll come. They'll come. <clears throat> How big is your butt? You can just remember that. Goes with the donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> William Booth said, My best men are women. <laughs> Come on. It's always the women, right? I mean, Esther, if I die, I die. I mean, they just go right in there, right in there. They don't care. The women. Mary, that which is conceived in you is of the Holy Ghost. Handmaiden, as you have said. I mean, they're just always compliant. They're just right in there. Changing the world, these women. But men. 
So Samuel, verse 22, brought Saul and his servant to the hall, seated them in the, high, in the head place, said, okay, bring me that choice piece of meat I gave you, the one I told you to set aside. Bring it. And he just presented it to Saul and says, here. This big, huge leg of lamb with cumin and cucumber and yogurts and special sauces. And they ate together on the rooftop that day. Wow. How many of you have been to Samuel's tomb? A couple of you. I went to Samuel's tomb a few years ago with Cindy Jacobs, Stacy, and I, a few others. And uh, I just went up on the roof and I went, oh, this is probably like where they ate. Right here. Just a big table with 30 guys. Just, ah. Uh, and they're eating and prophesying. And then after a while, I said, I should explore. And I found places with locked doors where you shouldn't go in. So I knew I had to go in. And I went down stairways and creaky places. And uh, it seemed like I was going somewhere. And all of a sudden, another door opened. And I heard chanting and sounds. And I went down into the crypt. And there was a whole, there was Samuel's tomb right in the crypt. Right down there. And a whole bunch of Jews are, and they're all just, and the women are on this side. And I'm going, ah, oh, where's Samuel's tomb? It's a holy place. I went, I couldn't believe this. So after 10, 15 minutes, I, I, I went out. I found Stacy and Cindy and Mike. I says, I found Samuel's tomb. I mean, I should have known it was called Samuel's tomb. But <laughs> <coughs> we went down there. The place was, Samuel loved this. The place was alive with Holy Spirit. So much so, I mean, Cindy just went out now. She just oh, fell against the tomb. We had to grab her. And Stacy was just... And uh, uh, like, they're incapacitated. For hours, they were incapacitated. Just by being in the presence of Samuel's tomb. Come on. Samuel said to Saul, he said, okay. They came down, verse 25. Samuel talked to them on the roof that day, right where I was. They rose at daybreak. He said, get ready. I'm going to send you on your way. But here, I'm going to tell your servant to go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to stay, so you stay with me for a while. I'm going to give you a message from God. Whoa. <laughs> See, he's, he's, he's narrowing him in. He's narrowing him in. <clears throat> So then Samuel took a flask of oil, poured it on Saul's head, and kissed him. What Tim Johns does to every other man. <laughs> other than his wife. <laughs> he says, has not the Lord anointed you leader over your inheritance? Here's what's going to happen. When you leave me, you're going to meet two men near Rachel's tomb. They're going to say to you, the donkeys you've been set out looking for, they've already been found. Now your father stopped worrying about them. He's worried about you. That's to build faith. Then you're going to go from the great tree of Tabor. Three men are going to be going up to God at Bethel. They're going to be carrying three goats, three loaves of wine, a skin of uh, three, three loaves of bread and a skin of wine. They will greet you, offer you two loaves, take it. What's he doing? He's building his faith. He's building his faith. He says, this is, what gonna, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. And when this comes, get ready. God is going to blast you. And then he says, after that, you're going to go to Gibeah of God. There's a Philistine outpost. As you approach the town, you'll meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with lyres, harps, tambourines, flutes, trumpets. And they will be playing them and they will be prophesying. So the ecstatic prophets have been in a session on a mountain. On a hill. They've worked themselves into an ecstatic frenzy. I just, did, I just studied again Brown Drivers and Briggs Dictionary. This is ecstatic possession. Right here. All the sources will tell it to you. Just trust me. I've looked up at least 100 sources on this. And this, pro, this frenzy will cause them to become raving translation is actually raving they're going to rave they're going to be filled with the spirit unstoppable full of god and they're going to be just prophesying rapid fire and they're, they're they've created an atmosphere there's an environment around them and they're 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 given to it they're just they're not holding back they're not holding back they've stepped across the line 
They've entered into it, and they're just in the zone. They're in the pocket. And anybody that gets around this is going to get it. <clears throat> and uh, Saul, Samuel says, when you see them, verse 6, the spirit that's on them is going to come upon you. <clears throat> and you will join in with their prophesying. You will prophesy with them. And you'll be turned into another man. Once these signs are fulfilled, whatever your hand finds to do, do it. God is with you. This is amazing. This is, this is impartation. It's, it's transference. It's spiritual orbit. It's everything. You come into contact with this, and it's going to come on you. You're going to be seized by God. Now, we know, we know that this is much more than some, you know, God's a gentleman and all the rest of that that you've heard. This is way, this is, this was written before that. Prophesy decently in order. This is written before that. They haven't even invented that yet. <clears throat> God turns uh, Saul's heart. Now, notice, I just want to, I just want you to see. Uh, go ahead a couple, um, uh, one more. You remember, you remember after 10 chapters later, when David fled from Samuel, or fled from Saul, he went to Samuel, Saul was chasing him to kill him. You remember the story. Word came to Saul, David is at Naoth at Ramah. So Saul sent men to capture David. Okay, now these, this is not a conference. This is not a rock tribe conference. We're not 40 days in the wilderness meeting God. These are tough soldiers on a job to capture David. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Now watch this. When these soldiers saw a group of prophets prophesying with Samuel standing in the middle, the Spirit of God came on Saul's men, and they prophesied also. It was irresistible. The power was so strong, whatever came around it came on the others. Saul was told about it, so he sent more men, another battalion, probably 20, maybe 50. Battalion of soldiers to capture David. Again, they prophesied also. It was irresistible. They couldn't stop it. He sent a third group, and the third time it happened also. So Saul says, of course, if you're going to do the job, do it yourself. He went to Naoth, but the Spirit of God came upon Saul even as he's walking. He's just coming to the proximity of the power zone. The Spirit of God comes on him. He is prophesying. He's raving. He's ecstatically filled with the Spirit. He, is, he cannot resist. He's brought right to the presence of Samuel, and he, he rips his clothes off, guys. His robes, kingly robes, gone. He's naked. He's humiliated. He's stuck on the ground like a bug. Naked, all day, all night, prophesying. This is very tough stuff. This is strength. This is power dimension. And this is, this, this is, the, this is the source of the school of the prophets. This, this is what has changed the earth forever. I mean, I, I asked uh, Mano, I said, have you been to the Museum of the Desert? The French prophets you know, they were persecuted violently by the Catholic Church back in the 1600s, 1700s. They filled the earth, thousands, hundreds of thousands of refugees. But when all the pastors were put in prisons and put in galley slaves, a young 13-year-old shepherdess, uh, not even speaking French, was seized by the Holy Spirit. She began to go into luminous visions. She began to speak perfect French. She was Occitan, but she spoke French that she didn't even know. The power of God would come on these girls. They said, and they and the whole uh, countryside was electrified with God until soon they say there were thousands of children prophesying in the fields, shaking the French world to its core, rocking the world. Kids full of the Holy Spirit prophesying, even children prophesying in French in, in cribs. These movements have been around forever, but we just haven't known it. And what, what God wants to do is he wants to anoint people to become powerhouses. 
to, with the spirit rushes on them, and they can literally, by the presence of spirit, shift whole atmospheres and deliver people. So Saul, this happened. And uh, so uh, Saul came into the presence. Back up three, and it just shows the verse. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, they went there. The Spirit of God came upon him in power. He joined in their prophesying. He joined in. When all who saw him said, ah, they, they said, what has happened to Saul? Is he among the prophets? Who is his father? How did he get this? This isn't even a generational line. He came into it, and this is, this is Acts 2. I'm going to fall on all flesh, sons and daughters. You don't have to come in a generational line. It's not denominational. It's open to everyone. Everyone. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to go quickly now. There's two more thoughts, and then we're going to pray. <clears throat> so uh, this happened, and uh, he went, verse 12, went back. <clears throat> After Saul stopped prophesying, he went to the high place. And he came back. His uncle said, I think that's Uncle Abner, by the way. That's the one who ends up leading the big armies. He says, uh, where have you been? I've been looking for my own donkey. When he saw it, then when I found, we went to Samuel. Saul's uncle, really? You went to the prophet? What did he say? What did he tell you? What's he talking about? What's going to happen? He said, uh, God found our donkeys. <clears throat> but he didn't tell him what the what this prophet said. So now you know, after that, God says, okay, we're going to make the king. And this is, a, of course, an amazing part. <clears throat> so Samuel summons the whole nation. We got the whole nation here. They all come down to Mizpah, and they're, gonna, <clears throat> they're going to uh, present themselves to the Lord. Verse 19. <clears throat> present yourself to the Lord by your tribes, by your clans, and the Lord will choose a king. So you know this was the biggest event in all of Israel. You know that. Okay, this is going to be the first king of Israel. And not only that, every hunk in all of Israel is going to be at the party. Okay, you've got 12 tribes, all the warriors, everybody's there, and they're going to be, you know, parading before the Lord. You can just imagine. I mean, they come tribe by tribe. They come men of Judah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They're just... And they, I mean, all the men of Judah. And, and the Lord is going to pick a tribe. And it's not Judah, even though the prophecy said it would come from Judah. There's nothing in Judah. And um, they start coming, tribe by tribe. Zebulons. I mean, rough Zebulonites. Worse than these guys. And then they come. Here come the Gadites. I mean, faces like lions, swift as gazelles on the mountaintop. Able to handle, you know, the sword in both arms. Sling in both hands. Is, ah! I mean, this is MMA, UFC. It's, it's all of them. Ah! They, and, ah! No, no, no. Tribe after tribe after tribe. Nothing. They're all rejected. Finally, the little tribe. Benjamin. <laughs> Come from the inner city. <laughs> kind of like Prince. And God says, yes, it's Benjamin. And all the Benjamins go, yeah. And all the others go, ooh. Why? Because if your tribe gets in, you get the best fruit trees, best roads, best wells. <clears throat> so they have to come by clan by clan. So they go, <clears throat> clan by clan. Finally, house by house. And Maitre's house is chosen. Kish's house is chosen. And finally, finally, Saul, son of Kish, is chosen. And everyone goes, yeah. Hey, Saul, Saul, he's our man. If he can do it, no one can go. Saul, I'll go Saul. Hey, this is the first king of Israel. Everybody's shouting, Saul, Saul, yes, yeah, Saul. Saul. You know when it's just gone beyond and it's a little awkward? It's just a little awkward. They started looking for him. And they can't find him. Saul? Now, this is bad news. Losing your king on your first day. I think this is worse than G losing Jesus at the temple. This, is, this has got to be the worst. So, they can't find him. What do you do when you lose something? And after that? Pray, right. You what? Ask God. Right? 
the women. So they inquired further of the Lord. They said, God, has the man come here yet? And God says, yes. He's hiding in the suitcases. <laughs> the luggage. He's in the luggage. Do you know how many guys are there? A third of a million guys. The man is hiding under a third of a million suitcases. What happened? I know what happened. I told you yesterday, it happened in the shower. It always happens in the shower. I've been to one of these big meetings. Huff and puff and I'll blow your house down. I mean, I, I've, all right now I've got scenes going Cambodia, Kiev, uh, Russia, Puebla Mountains, Santa, Santa, Santa Chile, Santa, Santa Chile, Santa, Santiago. Uh, I mean, all these meetings. Juarez, Mexico, Victor Richards. There was a little girl. I mean, she was like six. And she, the Spirit of God was falling all these. She got, and she started watching everybody fall down. She went on the stage, started pushing people at the knees because she thought it was a game. And uh, people wanted to, and I said, no, no, leave her. Suddenly, full-grown men, wham, they were just blasted by God. Full-grown men. She, went through, she thought that was so funny. She'd laugh. She'd go to the next one. Down they go. Go to the next one. Now there's no one left on the stage. She's laughing. And uh, she starts going off the stage. She's walking over here. And they don't know what to do. And they're, they're trying to come to me to get prayer. I said, you're coming to me? There's the power right there. Line up. She started pushing these guys over. I had 200 guys on the floor. And within minutes, this little girl, power of God was all over her. I, I've seen kids full of the Holy Spirit. And they're just, they're prophesying. This one gal in Kiev, she was so, I mean, this, this gal, she was like the real deal. She was Baptist as well. Worship leader, I didn't know that at the time. Spirit of God came on her. She's trembling and she's lying down there on the floor. I said, what's she doing? They said, we don't know. I said, pick her up. So they pick her up. I said, I just put her hand on someone's head. I went like this. I said, tell her to prophesy. Then in Russian or whatever. She starts saying stuff. And she just takes off. Now she's just going boom, boom, boom. She's going. And then she starts revealing the secrets of hearts. Like, really. In the whole group. Now guys are freaking out. Men are all repenting. <laughs> really quick. And she, she then, she turns to a guy like this. She goes... Like that in points, and she says, you said, and she starts telling his conversation to his wife that he doesn't believe any of this so-called stuff. <clears throat> and he's the president of the Bible school. And she says what he says and then prophesies into, her, into his heart. And he breaks down. And, and no matter, everywhere you go. And, but here's the problem. After a night like that, you're at home. You've had a big meeting. You're washing in the shower because you're hot. And all of a sudden, the devil comes and he says, you sure made a fool of yourself tonight, didn't you? No, I didn't. It was the Lord. What makes you think you're going to be any different tomorrow? Well, they said I would. <laughs> you're not going to be any different and nothing's going to change. What do you... Th and you just go... As the last sud is going down the drain, the spirit of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh comes upon you. And you go, I don't know. And you're changed back. You're Clark Kent again. You see, it has to be mixed with faith. It has to be mixed. You have to believe this. You go, oh, I guess it was me. And you come to the coronation, you're hiding in the suitcase. I see them all the time. They get fit, filled with the Spirit. I'm, I'm using them, we're exercising. And all of a sudden, they're gone for two weeks. They're at the back row again. I said, what are you doing back there? Back row. Well, you know. I said, get up here. Well, prophesy in the name of the Lord. Well, you know. I said, you're, you're kidding me, right? Well, you know, I, 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 it could just be me. I was just making those things up. Could have just been me. No. He's hiding in the luggage. They stand him up. There he is, six foot five. 
Eki homo. Behold your king. Behold the man. And then he just kind of, everybody goes, oh, and they just go home. It's just a lousy, lousy movie. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet. There's hope. Last thought. Here it goes. Then Naash the Ammonite went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead. If this was a melodrama and I said his name, you'd go, boo, say boo. 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 This side, say boo. 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 Not loud enough. Naash the Ammonite besieges Jabesh Gilead. Boo! That's it. This is the ultimate bad guy. Nayash the Ammonite. Boo! And he says, the men of the men of Jabesh says, oh, oh no, it's Nayash the Ammonite, the bad guy. Okay, we surrender. We'll make a treaty. Let us live. Because you know what ha- this if you have an ancient war, this is not risk on Friday nights. It's not monopoly in your treehouse. Okay? They come over the wall. They're going to cut all the guys' heads off, right? They're going to steal all their women as a concubine, and they're going to enslave all your kids. If you fight them and you lose, you're done. The elders go, okay, we'll, we'll surrender. We'll be subject. Just let us live. And they asked the Ammonite, said, oh. He says, all right, I'll let you surrender on one condition. Grab his arm. Grab his other arm. They said this. We're going to gouge out the right eye of every one of you in Israel. And so bring disgrace. We don't even want you to have your right eye. So they're going to stand up. And they're going to go right in with their fingers and scoop out his eye. That's if you surrender. Everybody, take your fingers. Take your fingers. Stick it in your right eye. Stick it in your eye. Stick it in. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Feel the text. Feel the text. Okay. That's if you surrender. You don't surrender, the head's gone. Here it is. Then the elders said, this was the worst elders meeting in the world. (laughs) There's never been a worse elders meeting. (laughs) You think, you're, you, you think your church is bad? This is bad. They said, oh, okay. Oh, give us seven days. And if no one comes to rescue us, we'll surrender. So their hope is like something's going to fall out of the sky. Something will happen. Something. Help. And Naash goes, all right. I'll wait seven days. And then we're coming in. So. Verse 5, just then Saul's returning from the field behind his oxen. What's the view like behind an oxen? <laughs> exactly. Here's the king. The king is doing nothing but running around looking for his own donkey and holding on to the tail of a cow. He's digging a rut. He comes off the field. What's wrong with all the people? Why are they crying? And they repeated to him what the men of Jabesh said. Now watch this. Watch this. Suddenly, when Saul heard these words... The Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power and he burned with anger. The same spiritual anointing lit up again. I mean, this is Bruce Banner and the Hulk. I mean, he just heard this and he was transformed. He took his sword and he cut his cow. Twelve times he cut his cow. This is the first McDonald's in Israel. And he said... Tell this, send out my cow everywhere. This is what's going to happen to you. If you do not follow Samuel and Saul, then the, watch it. The terror of the Lord fell on the people. Now we have a God revival. It's just like a whoosh. Suddenly, and they turned out as one man. Watch this. 300,000 from Israel. 30,000 men of Judah. We have a third of a million guys are catalyzed in a spiritual moment. Saul sent word. He said, say to the men of Jabesh Gilead, by this time tomorrow when the sun is hot, you'll be delivered. When the messengers heard this, they related. They said to the Ammonites, oh, okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll surrender. And you can do to us whatever seems good to you. The big party in the Ammonites camp. They're partying all night long. They finally go to bed. Verse 11 In the last watch of the night, 
Saul and his team broke into the camp of the Ammonites. They slaughtered them until the heat of the day. Those who survived were scattered so that not two of them were left together. And Saul delivered Israel that day. Awesome! How did it happen? Spirit of the Lord on a normal guy looking for his own donkey. Donkey, donkey. You see, there's hope for any one of us. You don't know what has been sent from heaven two days ago. You don't know. But this world needs a deliverer, many deliverers, men and women in the school system, rock climbers, fearless rock climbers, outrageous deity boasters. Tough-looking pastors. And the Spirit of God's going to come on you. And tonight we're going to do that. We're going to pray for one another. And we're going to pray. Go back to 10.6. We're going to pray this one verse. Here it is. So let's take you six. Right here. Just come. Stand right here. Just stand right here. Okay, see that? Verse six. All of you. Just stand up here. Okay. You are, let's go back on verse there. Okay, see that? Uh, no, no, we're in the wrong chapter. Uh, chapter 10, verse 6. Um, yeah. See this right here? Go back one. Yeah, there it is. You are the procession of prophets filled with the Spirit, blowing your horns, banging your cymbals. You come to, yeah. Coming down from the high place, okay? And you're all prophesying, okay? Okay, Come, 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 come on. They didn't stand like that. Come on. They're coming. Hey, yeah, come on. Hey, hey, hey. And they're all prophesying, okay? Okay? Now, verse 6, verse 6, okay, verse 6. When Saul hits them, or if it's Selena, Selena, okay? (laughs) Now, you're going to be coming. You're just walking along. You're going to reach this group of prophets. And suddenly, the spirit that's on them is going to come on you. Ho! And you are going to prophesy with them. Okay? That's how it happens. Now, look, look. Okay, guys? Your prayer tonight is verse 6. And, and so, if it's Pamela, you're going to put her name into that text three times. We're going to say, just gather around here. Put your hands there. Father, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus that the Spirit of the Lord will come upon Pamela, that Pamela will prophesy that you will be changed into another person. Whatever you put in her hand, she will have power to do it. God, come on her, on Pamela, in Jesus' name. Okay, that's my prayer right there. So all this group of prophets is praying for her for like four minutes. Okay? Suddenly, group leader... You're the group leader. And you'll tell her, Pamela, prophesy in the name of the Lord. And you'll just close your eyes so everybody disappears and you're not afraid. And you're going to hear things. You're going to see things. You're going to feel things. And then, and you're all just agreeing. And you, you just speak out. It's Whether it's a declaration, as Sam taught us. Whether it's a prophecy. Whether it's a righteous inclination. It doesn't matter. Because as you work with the Spirit... It's almost like tongues. You work with the Spirit. Suddenly something. I have seen tens of thousands of people released in the power of the Holy Spirit. Just like this. And the beautiful thing is, it lasts forever. If you don't have a shower. (laughs) As long as you stay in the Spirit, it's there. It's like a, a well. It just keeps coming. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to have, we're going to move some of the chairs here. We're going to move the chairs again, a group of about six or so, because, uh, you know, that way you can get everybody by 10 o'clock. And um, I'm going to put on my Celtic drumming from the House of Prayer, for 300-year House of Prayer in, in uh, Bangor, uh, Ireland. And we had all this Welsh Celtic, and that's going to be the music, because you have to be abandoned. You can't be afraid of your own voice, Right? You're just not afraid of your voice.
You're going to stir yourself. We're going to put that verse up there. Get a group, pick a leader. Make a group, pick a leader. And we're going to put the first one in the middle. 10-6 is our verse right up there. Robert, 10-6. Group, pick a leader. Put someone in the middle. Now say their name out loud. Say their name out loud. There it is right there. That's your prayer right there. Make room on the floor. Move chairs. Everybody gets a group. Okay, pick a leader of the group. Pick a leader of the group. Say their name before the Lord. Say their name before the Lord. Now I want you to pray as though you're the company of prophets coming down from the high place. You have faith. Come on, guys. You have faith. When you pray, things are going to happen. Come on. Pray verse 6. Pray verse 6. Pray verse 6. Put their name into it. Put their name into it. Say their name. Power. That's it. Say Emma. Emma, 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 Emma. Whoa. Yes, Lord. War on the enemies. You make your enemies a footstool. Wow. You will make your enemies a footstool. Praise the Lord. You will make your enemies a footstool. Until okay. Christ becomes all in all. Beautiful. Oh, we Keep going. Put Jesus a, pick Christ. a leader. Pick a leader. Jesus Christ. Leader. Put Son someone in the middle. Of God, have mercy Say their on name. us, oh God. Have mercy Say on verse the world, six over oh all of you. Ho. For five minutes or four Ho. minutes. Just begin to pray. Ho. 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 on pray with power guys this is not a game you're gonna do you're, you're, you're activating delivers of your nation tonight pray with power verse six pray with power verse six say their name say their name holy spirit of god will come upon you in power in power you will prophesy with them come on say their name say their name Spirit. Call for the Holy Spirit. Come, Spirit of prophecy. Okay, come on, come on. That's it, that's it. That's it. Now tell them, keep your eyes closed. And I want you to prophesy. I want you to declare. I want you to give some inspired speech. Come on, speak it out. What's God saying over this nation? Speak it out. What are you feeling? What are you seeing? Ezekiel, what do you see? I see a valley full of dry bones. Then prophesy to those bones. Ezekiel, prophesy. Say, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Okay, group leader, ask them to prophesy. Get them to prophesy. Speak it out. Speak it out. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you hear? Come on, group leader, tell them. Prophesy in the name of the Lord. Prophesy in the name of the Lord. That's it. Don't be afraid. In the name of the Lord. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you hear? Speak it out. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The sound of victory. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on. Shout unto God with Come the on. voice of triumph. Absolutely. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. What do you see? What do you triumph hear? What do you land. feel? That's good, that's good, that's good. Get him to speak, group leader, get him to speak. Get him to speak. Awesome. Awesome. Keep going, keep going. Okay, when you're done with the first one or the second one, put another one in the middle. Put another one in the middle. 
Say their name. Speak their name. Pray it again. Verse 6 with power. Verse 6 with power. That's it. Say their name. Yes, God. Yes, God. Another one goes in the middle. We're going to keep on going. Pray with power, guys. You're the group of prophets coming down from the high place. Come on. The Spirit is upon you. You are prophesying. You are raving. You are full of the Spirit of God. Whoa. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Stir yourself up. Here you go. Come on. Come on, prophets. Come on, prophets. Stir yourself up. Say. Yes, Lord. Say their name. Jesus. Speak their name. Jesus. Speak their name. Jesus. Spirit Lord is going to come upon you in power. You will prophesy with them. You will be transformed into another person. Then whatever your hand finds to do, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. God is with you. God is with you. Yeah? Good. Keep, Keep prophesying. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you hear? Speak it out. Speak it out. Don't be afraid. Oh, you're doing good. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Come on. You're anointing deliverers in your land. Tonight. Tonight. The land is raising up deliverers. It's the sound of war. It's the sound of war. It's the sound of war. The book of the wars of the Lord. Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. You're being filled with the Spirit. You're speaking in other tongues. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. With every crash of the tambourine. Whoa. With every strike of the drum. Different people are being touched tonight who have never been released in this before. There's an anointing in this room to release. When you clap your hands. When you clap your hands. Okay. Put another one in the middle. Just keep going. God is being released in praise. Group leader, when you feel it's right, tell them to prophesy. Tell them to prophesy. What do you feel? What do you see? What do you hear? Come on, Ezekiel saw a valley full of very dry bones. Power, 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 power. Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. You will prophesy with them. You will be transformed into another person. You will set your nation free. Come on. Come on. Yeah, the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon Larry in power. Larry is prophesying with the prophets. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. You will prophesy with them. You will be transformed into another person. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it, do it, do it, do it. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, 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 wow. Put another one in the middle. Everyone gets prayed for. This is awesome. Everyone gets prayed for. (laughs) Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Make sure they prophesy. The one in the middle prophesies. The one in the middle prophesies. If you feel the spirit of tongues, release tongues. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. That's it. Come on, prophets. Uh, Release these deliverers. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Go, 
Kiroko. Peseke Kiroko. Yeah. Peseke Kiroko. Peleke Ki. Osoke. Saraba. Peseke. Wow, 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 wow. Come on. Prophesy. Come on. Come on, group of prophets. Prophesy. Pray with power. Pray with power. Spirit Lord will come upon you in power, power, power. Yes, you will prophesy with them. The you will be transformed into land. another person. The army of the Lord is rising up. The army of the Lord is rising up. Holy Spirit. Land. Yes, Lord. Holy in Spirit of Ireland, God. Lord, in come on. Scotland, in come Wales, on. In England, oh God, come on. In Canada, Buffalo. All over the Buffalo. United States of America. In come on. Australia, oh God. Wow. In Africa. Visions are coming all over the room. The Lord, in Africa. Tongues. Prophecies, in South America. interpretation oh, of tongues. Praise the Lord. Come America. on, pray, pray, pray. Chinese, Spirit of the Lord will come upon Chinese you in power. You will the prophesy with them. The the yeah, Lord. yeah. Come on, Spirit of might. A Spirit oh, of might. Wow, wow, wow. I'm telling you guys, different ones are being released with power gifts right now. It's happening in this room right now. Right now. Father. Wow. Light to keep going, keep going, yes, keep going. Everyone gets prayed for. Everyone gets prayed for. Everyone gets prayed for. Russia. Oh, in Europe. Europe. United Europe. United Europe. God, we're asking for United Europe. God, bring forth an army of the Lord from United Europe. We ask the Lord, visit Rome. Visit Rome. Visit Rome, visit Rome, and Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Put the next one in the Son middle. Son Keep God. them going. Everyone gets prayed for. Prophesy in the name of the Lord. Prophesy in the name of the Lord. Come on, Robert. Prophesy. Prophesy. Spirit Lord will come upon you, Robert, in power. You will prophesy with them. Yes, you're going to be transformed. Transformed into another man. Transformed into another man. Holy Spirit, come. Wind of God, blow. Blow in this room. Fire. Fire, fire. We call for the release of the prophetic gift. Come, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the Spirit of prophecy. You will prophesy with them. You will prophesy with them. You will be transformed into another man. Come on. Oh, they're marching. The horses are marching. Horses are marching. A great host comes from the north. A great host comes from the north. They're riding angels, horses, the horses of the Lord, the horsemen of the Lord. They're riding from the north. They're coming from the north. Father, we ask that they're released all over the land. The horsemen, the horsemen, the horsemen, horsemen of the north, horsemen of the north. Bring them down, down over the United Speak it out, speak it out. Down from Russia. Speak it out. What do you see? Oh, what do you hear? Horsemen of the north. Revival comes from the north. Wow, 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 we wow, wow. Now in Jesus' name. Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. You will prophesy with them. 
you will be transformed into another person. Yes, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Keep going, there's a few more. The God with the voice we got 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. That's it, that's it, that's it. Spirit Lord will come upon you in power. You're doing good, guys. You're doing good. Say his name. Say their name. Say the name in the verse. Oh, you're doing well. You're doing so well. Come on. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. You will prophesy with them. You will be transformed into another woman. Come on. Another woman. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it. Do it. Do it. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Spirit of the Lord has come upon you in power. You will prophesy with them. You will be transformed into another person. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Yay. Oh, good job, good job, good job. Yes, Lord! You're being taken to a new dimension tonight. Going into new dimensions. The Spirit of God is coming on you in power. Wow. Wow. War on the enemies. You make your enemies a footstool. You will make your enemies a footstool. You will make your enemies a footstool until Christ becomes all in all. Wow. Oh, we lift up Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on us, oh God. Have mercy on the world, oh God. Ho! 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 Good job. Good job. Put the last ones in the middle. The last ones in the middle. Wow, wow, wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. The Spirit of the Lord is coming on you in power. You are prophesying with them. You're being transformed into another person.
Jesus, Jesus. Marching in a victory. 